This is the newest addition to the farm. Definitely the biggest tractor I've ever had. So it's a Moline G. I believe it's a 1950. I looked the serial number up a couple months ago um, before I got it, and that's what it was. But as long as I'm remembering right. actually got two eight volt batteries only the one is hooked up currently but the box is big enough for two got live hydraulics I could be wrong I think this is a upgraded seat from stock I think you had the option of this or basically just a flat piece of steel with a seat on it the actual seat itself I believe is homemade like all standard mullings or by standard I mean you know standard width not a not a row crop um, You've got this big platform here. You got these big fenders. It's real comfortable to get up on and stand on. Um, like all molings in this area, you got a hand clutch. This would be your hydraulics. Um, that's actually broken right now. And then your throttle. Your brakes are over there. This is your PTO engage. Amps, oil pressure and temp. This is your choke. This is your on off and your starter button. You got a light here to shine on these. On this one, these switches are aftermarket. They run all these other lights right here. The guy I got it from, got it from his mother's cousin, I think is what he said. And so it's got all this writing all over it from the original owner, or maybe not the original owner, but close to that. Um, from over the years, you can see, you know, that marks from 92. I think this guy had it for a long time. I love these grills with the giant Minneapolis logo. This one's got a big screen over it to keep the bugs out. This thing is just a tank. It's absolutely massive. So I got this nice toolbox, which is strong enough that lightweight me can stand on it. Um, I don't know if I'd put a 300 pounder on top of that, but you know, for me, it works just fine. Um, these have Delco style distributors. Um, this massive oil filter look at the size of this you know that's 10 inches tall and then so these have a 403 cubic inch in line four um it's the traditional large moline motor from back in the teens or the 20s um i can't remember the exact model i'll show it on screen here the moline big four cylinder engine was first built in 1925 and tested in 26 at the nebraska test facility in a 1220 chassis later would go on to become the 2132 in the 381 cubic inch variety and then later became the fta in the 403 cubic inch variety in 1935 and that motor carried up to the end of the gb line which ended production in 1959 but that was basically the uh the original g came out back then as a twin city um they went from like a 370 to and then they bumped it up to the 403 and then that's kind of when this tractor came about and then later when it became minneapolis moline um, when moline plow company and twin city merged they switched it to the fta i believe is the model and then later it became the moline g and then the gb and I believe that was the, I think the GB was the last model that had the big four cylinder. Then they switched over to the six cylinder 504s. Um, and the, well, the 425s and then the 504s. Um, and the, basically the motor's the same all the way up to a G1000 um, or a G1350. Just they went from a four cylinder to a six cylinder and then they put bigger cylinders on it because these blocks are, um, these engines are built in three pieces. You got the crankcase, you got the cylinder, and then you got the head. And this is all interchangeable with pretty much any of the four or six cylinder Moline motors um, from the U after a certain point when the U switched to the split block engine like this, which was a 283, clear up to the, like I said, the, uh, 800 HD 
the 800 cubic inch irrigation motor. Um, all basically everything's interchangeable within reason. There's some differences along the way, but you know, with the right parts, you can interchange just about anything. So we got a huge Marvel carburetor. Looks like uh, our air intake tube is homemade. Uh, got this big old generator on here. Like I said, it's get set up with the eight volt system. We got an old Allstate eight volt regulator. Um, so this is our hydraulics here and this hooks here. And I went to raise the disc the other day and it just, when I pushed it forward, it just boom, just blew out. So I'm gonna figure something out there. I'm, this doesn't really work right anyway. Um, I'm not sure what the deal is with it. If it's been needed some work in there, but the detents don't quite work right. So it won't hold the disc up. You gotta hold the lever forward. Um, it's kind of hard to juggle a hand clutch, the throttle, and all of that all at the same time, but you never know. Uh, but you can see this thing's got more writing all over it here. So I went through and read this carefully. I honestly hadn't even seen this part here. I haven't literally paid that much of attention to this tractor. I've maybe put an hour or two use on it, but um, that's about how to adjust this regulator to work on eight volt instead of six. Um, if I'm correct, see a date there, uh, 6, 12, 65. Um, looks like maybe there was a date there too. I mean, that seems pretty distinctive to me. That doesn't look like runs in the paint. You can see other writing right there. It says positive. I'm assuming it probably said positive ground because um, this is an eight volt positive ground setup. Um, you know, the batteries got writing all over them. There's writing all over this thing in different places. You see, there's oh. one, two, three, four, five coats of paint on it. Maybe six, because it looks like there, you'd say there's three different coats of yellow. I have a feeling this tractor came from way north of me, but I have a feeling that county was using this to pull like a big road grader or something. Um, that's the only thing I can really think of that would explain the the weird flashing lights and the stoplight and the you know just the general overall condition of the tractor doesn't really strike me that it spent a lot of time working hard in the field um, it does it is set up for uh, clamp on duels i do have a set of clamp on duels for it that are in decent shape i was told um, that they'd been through the motor recently um and you know with antique tractors recently could mean 30 years ago but I would guess from some of the other stuff I've seen, I would guess maybe the 90s. Um, I don't think it's really... The guy I got it from acted like he'd had it maybe 10 years or so, 15. Um, I, th I think that's what he said anyway. And uh, that he had had... Or that the engine had been gone through not too long before he got it. But um, It's got mismatched heads on it. They should be the same compression ratio because that's a big deal with Moleins is different heads have different compression ratios. So this is a newer head and this is an older head. I wonder if it went they went through the motor because it cracked the head, um, but I don't know that for sure. It's just speculation. Um, obviously, they're both painted about the same color, so they've both been on there a while. Um, we're going to pull plugs out of them and bore scope it and see what it looks like in there at some point i have a stash of moline parts um, so i've got an intake and exhaust manifold from an lp tractor i've got some heads i've got all kinds of stuff but i think what we're going to end up doing is we're going to end up putting a different set of heads on these things these motors are phenomenally powerful uh, according to tractor data they're only rated for like 50 horsepower but these things make so much torque it's unbelievable um, they will outwork anything else in the 50 to 60 horsepower ballpark they're just they're 100 cubic inches bigger than most tractors in that horsepower range um, excluding the john deere the d and the g but um farmalls olivers everything else alice 
you know, everything else that ballpark horsepower wise is in the 200 to 300 cubic inch. The reason they're rated so low is they're rated at 1100 RPM. So, and um, when they switched to the GB, they slightly increased the compression just a little bit. And they raised the RPM to, I think, from 1100 to 1300. And it went from, I think they're rated at like 50 or 55. They went up to 67 or 65, something like that, according to tractor data. Um, so you can see a little bit makes a big difference on these. Um, I've already turned the governor up a little bit on it just because I didn't think we were even getting 1100 out of it. It sounded like it was idling as it was pulling the disc. So it really, it really runs now. But I think we're going to switch out the heads. I've got some higher flowing heads. If we can come up with a M670 intake and exhaust manifold, then we probably will put that on there. If not, we may stick with what we have for now. People are telling me with enough compression without stroking it or anything crazy, you know, we could get into the 80s, maybe 90 horsepower out of it. Um, I don't think with the heads I have we're going to get there because I don't think we're going to have enough compression. But my plan is to be able to throw a set of wheel weights on this and the duels on it and pull a five bottom or six bottom plow and a really big disc. I haven't quite decided in my head how big of a disc I think it would pull, but I know it'll flat fly with my 12 foot that I have now. It's, you've seen that in some of the videos um, that I pull with my M, and the M kind of struggles with it. I know the M is eh, 60 maybe, 55, 60 horse, and this thing just, this thing runs circles around it with that same disc. So if it'll pull a 12 foot like that, then there's no reason in my mind it wouldn't pull, you know, a 14 or a 16 now in a, in a slower year, obviously. Um, you know, a little more engine work, I think we definitely could be in the 18 foot disc ballpark. Um, obviously, depending on the weight of the disc, we're not, we're not gonna kind of pull one that's super heavy, but that's the plan anyway. As you saw in the other video, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. Once I uh, turned the RPM up on it, the muffler started getting a little warm and the muffler just kind of fell apart. Um, not a big shocker, it was pretty rotten. So we ended up with, then on top of that, this thing was already extremely loud with the muffler it had. Um, then the muffler fell off and we ended up with this, this piece of pipe on here for now, temporarily. Um, we're gonna try to put a muffler back on it because now it's so loud you can't hardly stand it even with earplugs. Um, this has got a three inch exhaust on it, but anything Moline requires extensive research, try to find the right parts, right part numbers, making sure everything's quite right. And uh, you know, it's gonna take some work, but at the moment it seems to function correctly. Um, you should go check out my video. I did a, you know, a startup video on it. Um, done a couple other videos with it running. Um, one thing it'd be nice if we could put power steering on it, if we could come up with a power steering kit for it. Um, like I said, I'd like to juice the motor up a little bit more. Um, I know the rear end can take it because I know people that are pulling these things, they're pulling them in the 300, 400 horsepower ballpark. But we're gonna try to keep this one under control, like 1600, 1800 RPM. Assuming that's a safe one. I'm still talking to some people trying to figure out what a safe RPM to run it is. I don't want to kill it, obviously, but, you know, 1,000 RPM, 1,100 RPM is just, it's barely getting woke up. Like I said, people run these things 2,000 plus tractor pulling on alcohol, and they live forever like that. These motors are extremely durable. It's almost impossible to kill them. But I'd been wanting a bigger tractor. I'd kind of been looking for a, you know, a W9 Farm All or International or John Deere D or an R. Um, and then this thing kind of fell on my lap. We actually ended up trading the unstyled John Deere A I had. We ended up trading it and some cash for this tractor. Uh, this is going to be massively more usable than the unstyled A, which really didn't have a lot of use. 
Um, I really am gonna miss having the John Deere because I really enjoy the two cylinder deers. Um, that just means we're gonna have to look at getting a different one now, but I'd like to get a coat of paint on this thing. I don't really like the faded yellow look. Um, not entirely sure what we're gonna do for paint. I need to find some wheel weights for it. it definitely needs uh, needs a little more weight back there, even with the big tires on it. Obviously, want to get this other battery hooked up. I'm sure it's no good, but we're gonna have to get another one for it. Um, it you can tell once it gets cold out, it's gonna need a second battery. It turns over okay, but you can tell. 20 degrees out it's probably not gonna start and you know if you get something heavy stuck in the snow you gotta take the tractor out to play we got some steering work to do we got this greasy rag right here tied around the seal on the steering box this joint here is pretty loose which these are adjustable you take a cotter pin out and you can screw them in and tighten them up um, same up here all this is loose it needs greased I'm sure the rear end needs the oil changed in it like I said hydraulics are messed up now they were kind of messed up before now they're really messed up you know there's a lot of stuff to do a lot of small projects i put a set of plug wires on it um it looks like it needs a set of points um you know just general maintenance i don't think it's really like i said i don't think it's really done anything other than just putter around the yard for maybe the last 15 20 years um before that it was the primary tractor for its owner um who apparently must have cared for it quite a bit um, to keep it around and keep it going. Um, like I said, these things, they rarely die. Unless something catastrophic happens, they just keep plugging along. And they just keep making power. Um, there's just nothing, uh, nothing in the red lineup that compares to this. A W9 just doesn't even, doesn't even hold a candle to it. Um, you start getting into the 600, 650, you know, 660 series, maybe. But at that point, you're talking 10 years newer, 15 years newer than this thing. I mean, this is a, realistically, it's a 20s tractor wrapped in modern, more modern looking sheet metal. But, uh, so far, I really enjoy it. My grandpa had Moline's. Um, he grew, or my grandma grew up driving a U, which I haven't done a video on it, but I actually have that U. And, uh, they had... A Moline, an Oliver, a Farmall, um, and then once the U left, I guess they had a U602, and then uh, maybe a Five Star. I can't remember. There was a bunch of there's a bunch of Molines, and they were all propane. My grandpa had a thing for propane powered Molines, which is a big deal. I mean, Moline Moline had the propane deal worked out. You know, a U on propane was like 55 horsepower, versus a gas one was. And 48 something like that more than an m farm all definitely but you know the lp tractors really were powerhouse um the gas tractors like this one is still powerful but you know if you can find a a gb lp you're, you're cooking with gas then well, that's a powerhouse um i'd love to have a g that's a diesel if we could find one uh, Moline diesels are apparently, you either love them or hate them. Um, not exactly the most powerful thing, but extremely fuel efficient, reliable, tough, just like these are. But I think it'd be cool to have a gas and a diesel both. But, you know, these things are starting to command a little bit of a price um, just because they are so big. Um, you know, it's this thing will scrap for twice as much as a farm all probably. Just the scrap weight of the engine is proof of that. Anyway, well, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Uh, watch for some more content coming on this thing. I got into a lot of videos that we're going to be doing on it. Just little stuff here and there. We're going to figure out how to fix that hydraulic valve on that thing. We'll probably have to pull that whole reservoir off there and work on the valves and stuff, but... We'll have to see what we can do with that. See ya.